right, next up on our tour here at Ajax Annual Canadian Car of the Year Awards is the Lexus RCF. This is a car I'm really curious to try out, partly because it's not been very well received by the automotive uh, media, and I really want to see for myself what it's all about. So let's have a quick uh, tour of the exterior here. We chose the one in the bright orange. I forget the exact color code, but in this sunlight it really pops. It's got a lot of metal flake and pearl in it. As you can see, it's on Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. It's got some gigantic rotors and six piston front calipers. It's got a big F on the side, which is my favorite letter in the alphabet. It's a big sexy coupe. One of the big knocks on it, of course, is its weight. It's uh, close to 4,000 pounds, which is fairly portly, at least compared to some of its competitors like, say, the M4, which is a few hundred pounds lighter than that. So I'm really curious to see how well controlled the body motion is given its weight and really just uh, how well balanced it is around the racetrack. So let's hop in and take it for a rip. As you can see, it's a $90,000 car in solar flare, and it has an eight-speed automatic transmission and a natu naturally aspirated V8, which is a bit odd, or not, I shouldn't say odd, it's a bit unusual in the segment. These days, everyone's going turbo, but as you can see, it's got Lexus's usual high-quality interior, some very nice bucket seats with shoulder pass-throughs if you wanted to add harnesses, lots of suede, lots of carbon fiber. Very nice, all right? Let's hop in and uh, go for a rip. All right, I'm all buckled up here. Let's fire this baby up. Nice. That five liter V8 sounds very nice. It's, um, I believe it's rated at 467 horsepower at 7,100 RPM, something like that, and around 390 pound-feet of torque, which ain't so bad for a naturally aspirated V8. And uh, as usual, it's got a bunch of uh, driver modes like all modern sports cars have. So it's got Eco, Normal, Sport, and Sport Plus. So we will put it in Sport Plus, which uh, gives you a bit more of a heavier steering feel, uh, speeds up throttle response, firms up the suspension, does all the usual stuff when you go to Sport Plus mode. We are off for a quick lap of Canadian Tire Motorsports Park's driver development track in the Lexus RCF. And just coming out on the track. Oh, she's got some jam. I like it. How's she doing the corners? Nice. Oh, it's sliding around a bit too. I like it. Man, that beat sounds good. Brakes hard here. Wow, it doesn't feel that heavy to me. Oh yeah, this is nice. A little oversteer. Out of the brakes. Wow, brakes are good. Oh, a little slide again. Yeah, she's, she's tail happy, I like it. I'm normally complaining about understeer in a Lexus, but this, this baby's got some character. things man it's got surprisingly good motion control here I'm not feeling a lot of body roll it's quite taut actually man this thing hustles and I'm really surprised it's not understeering in fact it's a little loose but it's probably because it's so cold out the tires aren't up to temperature yet but man, the gearbox is really responsive too I'm impressed. It's such a small, tight track. It really doesn't suit a car, a big GT car like this, but man, it, this thing's properly fast. Whoa. Gotta say, I am pleasantly surprised. There is a lot of character in this car. First of all, love the sound of the engine. I'm sorry, you could talk about turbos having more torque and everything, but you can't beat the sound of a natu naturally aspirated V8. It just sounds good. This thing revs high too. I don't know what the the rev limiter set up, but it revs over 7K and it sounds good. Handling dynamics were actually really surprisingly 
good on a tight little track like that. I never felt like I was fighting understeer and again that might have been a case of cold tires really loosening the car up. Be interesting to take it for a three or four lap session and see where its balance is once the tires are up to temp, once the brakes are up to temp, but in that environment which you know would simulate an autocross or you know going lapping on a cold fall day like it is today, the handling balance was really good. Uh, I was getting excellent turn in response, you know it wasn't trying to wash off the line. And then on power, I was getting some nice little slides. Um, and I do have it in Sport Plus mode, so it does have stability control once you get too far out of line, but it was allowing me to play around with the car a little bit, which I love to see that in a stability control system. A lot of them cut in too early and too aggressively, but this was letting me play with some yaw angle, and it was when it was coming in, it was doing it very gently. So kudos there. I like the way that system was tuned. Brakes seemed excellent. I mean, it's got gigantic six piston brakes on it. Very good tires, which help braking, obviously. Um, and the gearbox, spot on. I mean, it was downshifting exactly where you would want it to. So the shift logic that they've put in it in Sport Plus mode was definitely designed with this kind of driving in mind. So, man, I'm a little puzzled why it's been reviewed so harshly. Uh, I guess it's a scenario where you would need to test it back to back against something like an M4 to really get a sense of why people have been a little hard on it, but uh, hmm, I, I really like it. I, I want to spend more time with it. I, I feel like it's a car worth exploring. So.